Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, please like, subscribe, share, tell a friend. Again, we try to every single night, well, Monday through Wednesday, and then on the weekends, try to give you the, the best possible outcome from technical analysis via an unbiased uh, point of view. And that's kind of what leads us here. Uh, last night, uh, obviously, we talked about uh, several things. Um, I liked what uh, the NASDAQ names did yesterday. They kind of detached themselves yesterday from uh, all the bank selling. And we had three big days, so four big days, of really aggressive bank uh, selling. The one thing that I really do like, I, I don't think any of us can give, it's very tough for any of us to kind of give the, the government or any government agency uh, any type of credit. But I will tell you, man, I, I was thinking about it. I, I think that for once, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think for once that the government, right, they did a pretty good job of putting out a major, major fire. Again, we don't know if this one fires in the spread yet, but I, I give them a lot of credit. They, they came out right away, SIVB, one day later, FDIC takes control. The day after that, they start spinning it off to the highest bidder. They, they didn't lead it lag, you know, they didn't lag all these other stocks, uh, SBNY, right? They didn't let these things just drift for weeks and weeks and weeks and taking the market uh, down with it. They, they really nipped it in the bud. And, you know, you kind of got one of those scenarios yesterday that even the sellers from the bank stocks, they got tied. If you guys remember uh, last night on the video, I turned around and said, I really, you know, you don't want to be shorting day three uh, of this big, big move. And we also talked about a very big number here. Uh, in last night's video, and I think Kyler even made uh, a YouTube short about this, kind of as a reminder, how big that 9440s levels were. And we were, we talked about it last night in the video. And the question going into uh, today's day was, well, can the tech stocks once again detach themselves from everything else? And before we even got that number, we had the CPI come in this morning. Uh, 6% was the consensus, came in at 6%. Um, so a lot of people believe that uh, the move, the next possible move, was already baked in, and you know markets started moving higher uh, to the bulls' credit, especially the technology bulls. Uh, they did reclaim this 294.40s level and trade right into supply. The next supply, uh, I, I thought it was two. Uh, I thought it was going to be 297.50s. It actually overshot a little bit. It traded up to 298. And we'll get to uh, individual pivots in a second. So it was a very, very good productive day uh, in the bulls. And not only were, were bulls resilient, a lot of bull look bullish looking charts really woke up. Right? I mean, incredibly woke up. Look at Meta. Right? Look at Meta again. We'll get to the pivots in a second. This thing is a stone throws away from earnings highs. So look at Microsoft, right? Microsoft had a huge move today, right? We talked about Microsoft last night in the video. Huge move today out of this whole base here, right? Uh, even Tesla woke up, right? We talked about Tesla putting the hammer yesterday off the 50-day. Even Tesla woke up and reclaimed this, you know, this uh, supply zone on the daily chart, and now it's close to attacking the the 50-day moving average. Look at look at the look at AMD, right? AMD is very very close as well. Uh, to putting, you know, to kind of challenging this earnings high. So we're in a very, very, uh, you know, very weird place that we've had so much aggressive news and such a big aggressive spin cycle with these banks. And uh, again, this is kind of what we talked about uh, on the weekend video about, you know, people who, you know, people who just were never, were not around 2007, 2008, talking about Armageddon, talking about destruction of prices. We're still here. And not only are we still here, three days later, we're talking about AMD, Meta, and, and NVIDIA, Right, and Nvidia possibly taking out their their uh, 2023 high. So again, it, it's it's a it's a great story, right? It's a really really great story. Uh, you know, it, people since uh, I don't use the word great. It was a horrific story, right? About the banks, potential failures, potential. You know, three banks failed in a week. You know, more dominoes to come. But it's a better story the resilience of the bulls. And that's the bottom line. And again, if you go through your history books, you could see it. Even when it started in the 1980s in the uh, savings and loans crisis, right? This is a better, uh, this is definitely a better 
uh, comparison to the SNL crisis in the 80s than the 2007, 2008 crisis uh, that we saw. But you know, if you look at the 2080s uh, 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 SNL crisis, if you look at the Asian crisis, if you go through all the wars, if you go through 9/11, if you go through uh, the global pandemic and everything involved, the resiliency continues to be. And again, yes, I'm a firm believer in trading both sides of the market. I I I am the champion of projecting independence to every trader that you can have it all by absorbing both sides of the market appreciating both sides of the market and take advantage of both sides of the market. But I will tell you, nothing feels good like a raw stamp, angry, vicious, violent bull stampede. And that's exactly what we got today. Uh, and it was a pretty cool day. And I think a lot of us uh, are are very, very happy. It doesn't, again, I, I, you know, I have no problem trading a bear market. Again, I trade both sides of the market. It's just a, a good bull market. It just feels, it hits a little bit different. That's exactly what it's think. Also, what I what I like seeing was all these regional banks like SNV, for example, uh, like the CEO Schwab, right? They got in front of the they got in front of a potential catastrophe, right? For example, the Schwab CEO came out today and said, "Hey, everything is going good. We're you know eighty percent of all our deposits are above the FDIC uh, threshold, right?" So, excuse me, below the uh, FDIC threshold, uh, they said that they're getting about $2 billion worth of deposit inflows a day. That's a good thing. That's exactly what the market here uh, wanted to hear. Today, you had that really aggressive uh, dead cat bounce at the open with FRC. was up about 50% at one point, WAL. You know, this thing had a big, big move up. Even Schwab, when the CEO uh, bought those 50,000 shares. And what was cool about what we saw today at one point, all these stocks reversed, right? At one point, because around the afternoon, they reversed. And you can see here, right? The WAL went literally from like 41 all the way to 23, and it rebounded, right? It put up an $11 move into the close. So if you're a bull, you know, you kind of like what you want to see here. Uh, if you're a bear, you're a little bit, you know, you're a little bit uh, kind of disheveled. Of, well, uh, why, is, why isn't the market not crashing? Because again, that's the whole point. The sky is not falling. If you were only eight, nine, 10 years old during 2000, 2008, you don't have a say so what, how this market is compared to that market because you were, you were still sucking on your mommy's teat. I said it, but no offense, but it, it is what it is. But going into tomorrow's session, um, going into tomorrow's session, now that we have the CPI out of the way, right? And I, by the way, and I say sucking on your mommy's teat, I say that in the nicest possible way possible um but going into tomorrow again we I, I don't think the story of the banks is written yet okay i don't think we're in the final chapter is it possible another bank comes out and has some news absolutely so i i don't believe uh this is like this is the end this is the, the season you know season finale of the 2023 four-day uh bank crisis right we'll never forget but the, the most important part is if there is another shoe to drop, the most important part is kind of what the bulls did in the last couple of days, especially in the technology sector. Can they embrace the bad news? Can they shove it along and continue on the merry way? And if that's the case, you definitely have to feel that the narrative back to the buy side uh, will start uh, coming back very, very soon. But again, it's still very, very early in the saga. We'll see how the market plays out, especially for tomorrow. And the key is, again, always be, always be prepared on both sides of the market. So, again, I gave you guys, uh, and again, for all you guys who are brand new, I, for all you guys who are taking 10, 15 minutes out of your time to watch my nonsense on a daily basis, the least I can do is give you guys uh, the pivots on the cues. Uh, and again, if you've been watching the video, it, pretty good, right? Pretty good. So yesterday you had this uh, 294, uh, 40s level got rejected twice. Uh, for going into tomorrow, the bulls really need to close and start building above 298. If they can start reclaiming above 298, then that channel that we started building upon that ended that ended around uh, February, excuse me, March the 3rd, March the 4th, it will reclaim this whole channel here. It will start the move. So if we can get it closed tomorrow, above 298, 299 on the queues, I do believe it will start a cycle. And I think the cycle will get the 301. And if it gets above 301, then I think we, we could test those uh, 304 highs that we had 
on March the 6th. So we'll see. You know, we'll see. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, some of the pivots today. Uh, very, very aggressive. Okay, as you can imagine, uh, anytime you see uh, all the you know all the horsemen. Okay, all the beta stocks uh, on uh, on the pivot watch. You know, there's an opportunity that they confirm uh, is going to be. Uh, a premium session. So let's talk about it. So QQQs, we already talked about 294.40s, uh, rejected twice back to back days, needs to build. Uh, they went to uh, almost 298. That's where the next uh, channel, big base, uh, needs to be built. Uh, Tesla, wake up, baby. We finally woke up a little bit today. Let's see if we get a follow through tomorrow. Uh, 178.30s needs to build. The 79.50 is the pre market high for the initial push to 181.30. And that was exactly what happened here, perfectly on the 60 minute move. So it took out it took out the seventy uh, it took out the seventy eight thirties uh, took out the pre market highs of seventy nines and traded right to the eighty one thirties and then obviously it remounted that and started putting in new highs. Listen, if Tesla gets going, I mean we could see you know we could see a push into the eighty five eighty seven level uh, if you know if today's channel uh, confirms uh, tomorrow. Uh, Nvidia monster move two thirty five fifties the pre market highs. And 236.30 was the March 10th highs. They both need to confirm. NVIDIA went absolutely nuts today, and so did AMD, right? So here was NVIDIA. It took out the 35.50. That was the pre-market highs. Took out the 36.30s and traded all the way up to 242. I still like this thing uh, for tomorrow if it starts uh, reclaiming today's channels. Huge move there. Uh, Amazon, nice move into supply. 9402 rejected yesterday. Needs to build. Uh, Amazon went right into the 60-minute supply of uh, right here, right into the 95s. But again, I think if this thing starts confirming, especially the 50-day moving average, see this 50-day moving average? Any close on Amazon above like 95 and a half, 96, this thing's going to start spreading a little bit as well. Uh, Mike, uh, Apple didn't do anything. Uh, 53.14 needs to build, went to like 53.40 and then kind of died out. Microsoft was huge, uh, 258. Uh, needs to build. Here is Microsoft, right? So it took out the 258 level, was the previous channel. It took out the two, uh, 260 12 area, traded all the way up to 261. This thing starts building above today's channels. Again, look how much room you have up uh, from Microsoft. Uh, Netflix never got there. Meta went out of its mind. Uh, Meta announced pre market they were having their second round of cost cuts, layoffs. Unfortunately, 10,000 people are going to lose. Uh, their jobs, uh, you know, 83, uh, 83, 80, 84 needs to build. And as you can imagine, Meta went uh, absolutely nuts. It traded all the way up to uh, 94. And guys, look how close Meta is to its earnings highs. If this thing starts confirming its earnings highs, man, you can see a really, really big boost. Again, we saw some weekly and next week's uh, $200 calls come in. So a lot of bullish bets finally coming back into the market. But more important is the market, especially the bulls, the speculation money represented bulls that especially in the technology sector are finally waking up and negating the bad news from the banks. It, it's a, such a big deal when the technology stocks kind of trade in their own, uh, you know, they're rolling the, their own two feet because if everything gets pulled down, that means there's a sell first, right? Shoot first, ask questions later. But when the technology stocks are strong and then everything else is strong, it's usually a really good outcome in the end. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.